Hello, my name is Rostam, and in this video, I will be teaching how to classify Twitter tweets as either having positive or negative sentiment. Tweets can usually be put into two categories. Positive tweets are hopeful and confident and think of good aspects of a situation rather than the bad ones. On the other hand, negative tweets are seen as expressing or meaning a refusal or denial. As shown in the slide, I created a table where each one of these tweets were passed into the machine learning model and outputted whether there was a positive or negative connotation with it. I am happy, I'll put it positive, while I am sad, I'll put it negative. We will be using a method called naive Bayes classifier, where this is the formal equation below. The general idea is by looking at the keywords of a tweet and seeing if each word has a positive or negative connotation. We want to see what is the chance of each word being in a positive or negative tweet. We combine these probabilities together to calculate the tweet being positive or negative. I always think it's easier to explain the concept with an example. If the tweet given is today is a good day, the first thing we will have to do is pre-process the tweet, which I will talk about later on. The process tweet will contain the words today, good, and day. Once we have the key words, our goal is to see what is the probability of each word being in a positive tweet and vice versa, the probability of each word being in a negative tweet. We know that the word good is usually included in a positive tweet rather than negative. So that is why if a tweet contains good, it would most likely be positive. For this example, we want to find the probability of today, good, and day being associated with either positive or negative tweets. That is the basic idea of naive Bayes and what we will be translating into code later on. So how do we calculate what is the probability of a word being in a positive or negative tweet? One way is using a frequency dictionary, where it counts how often a word is seen in, the, in a positive or negative tweet. Let's look at an example where we have three processed tweets. The first one contains the keywords today, good, and day and has positive sentiment. The second one contains the keywords watch, bad, and movie, and has negative sentiment. The last tweet contains the keywords movie, scary, but, bad. As shown in the table, each unique word has its own row with a negative and positive column. We then count how often each word was associated with a positive or negative tweet. For example, the word today was only in the first one, which was classified as having a positive sentiment. So we find a row with today and add one to the positive column. If we look at the word bad, we can see there are two negative tweets that contain this keyword. So we go to the bad row and add two to the column, to the negative column. We do this for all the keywords and all the tweets to create the frequency dictionary. Once the frequency dictionary is complete, we're able to calculate the probability of a keyword being in a positive or negative tweet. To calculate the probability of the word bad being in a negative tweet, all we have to do is to find the number of times bad is in a negative tweet. So we go to the bad row and the negative column to find two. Then divide this number by the total number of negative counts. So we sum up the entire negative column, which is seven. So the probability of the word bad being in a negative tweet will be two out of seven, which is equivalent to about 30%. To calculate the probability of the word bad being in a positive tweet, it would be where bad is positive, which is zero, divided by the total number of positive counts, three. So it will be zero divided by three, which is zero. So just by looking at the keyword bad, if a tweet only contains this keyword, it will have a higher chance of having negative sentiment. With tweets with multiple keywords, you calculate the probability of each keyword being in a positive or negative tweet, then multiplying them all together to get the total probability of the tweet being positive or negative. Now let's start writing some code in Jupyter Notebooks. I have linked the GitHub repository below where you will be able to download the Jupyter Notebook file. For the first part of the code, you will need to have two Python packages installed for import, an OTK and NumPy. 
If you do not have either one of these, you can use pip to do it. Once installed, you're ready to continue. The first thing we need to do is download the Twitter dataset to train the model, which can be done by running the following line. This will download a dataset of tweets directly on your device that we can use. Now we can import the JSON file into the variables all positive tweets and all negative tweets. We can get some details where we see that there are 5,000 positive tweets and 5,000 negative tweets. The first positive and negative tweets can be printed out as an example of what we have to deal with. By looking at the first tweet, there are parts of the given sentence which are not very useful for what we are trying to do. We can see hashtags and tags in it that will decrease the accuracy of the model. That is why we pre-process every tweet before using it for naive Bayes model. For pre-processing, you will need to import the regular expressions in string library. The first pre-processing technique used will remove hyperlinks, Twitter marks, and styles using regular expressions. The next technique is tokenizing each string, meaning it will split a tweet into its individual words. The next technique will remove punctuations and stop words. Stop words are words that do not add significant meaning, such as I and me. The last technique is stemming, where we will convert each word to its most general form. For example, learning, learned, learned will all become learn. Once we finish the pre-processing techniques, we can use a random tweet to see how it is processed through each step. The first step removes all the hyperlinks, Twitter marks, and styles. The next step tokenizes a tweet as it becomes a list. The next step we remove the stop words and punctuations. Words such as a and on are removed. Then we stem each word and we are left with the process tweet that we will use for training on our model. Now that we are done learning about the different pre-processing techniques, we are able to combine them all together into one function called process tweet. The function will be given a tweet and will return the process tweet in the form of a list. For example, by taking the 1000 negative tweet, which says, you mean you're not offering, and once process becomes mean, offer, in a frowny face. Notice how one of the keywords is a frowny face. This can be thought of as just like another keyword that can give a lot of meaning when trying to predict positive or negative. The first step into training our model is splitting the data into the training and testing set. The training set will be used to train the naive Bayes model, while the testing set will be used to test how accurate the model is. So we will be using the first 8,000 positive and negative tweets as a training and the other 2,000 positive and negative tweets for testing. We will associate the Y value of zero for negative tweets and the Y value of one for positive tweets. The variable train x will contain 8,000 tweets and the variable train y will contain the corresponding y values. Similarly, the variable test x will contain 2,000 test tweets and the variable test y will contain the corresponding y values. Now, it is time to start coding the function that creates the frequency dictionary which as we learned before is essentially a table that tracks how many occurrences of a word was seen in a positive or negative tweet. The parameters tweets contains a list of tweets and y's contains a corresponding y value. We will be using a Python, we will be using Python's dictionary to store the data. The first step is we need to iterate through each tweet and its y value. Tweet will be the string 
and y will be the end value of either 0 or 1. Next, for each tweet, we have to call the process tweet function that turns it into a list of its keywords. Then, for each keyword, we want to increment that value in the frequency dictionary. To have an easier time storing these values in the dictionary, we will make, a key, we will make the key a tuple of the keyword and the corresponding Y value. So, for example, if the current keyword was bad and it was from a negative tweet, the pair would be a tuple of bad as the first index and zero as the second index. Finally, we just need to increment this pair in the dictionary. If the pair is already in the dictionary, just increment the value by one. If the pair is not in the dictionary, initialize the key value pair starting at one. The frequency dictionary function is finished and we can now pass in the training data for it to be turned into a frequency dictionary. Now that the create function is complete, let's test it with a small data set. I wrote five tweets that are inside this tweet list. Each element in the list is correlated with the y value in the y's list. Once we run this cell, the frequency dictionary will be printed out. The pair the first pair inside the dictionary has key happy one with a value of one. This means that the word happy was seen in positive tweets once. We can do this for any pair inside the dictionary and it is the same as we were creating the actual table from the beginning of the video. Now we can train the model using naive Bayes. We can use the actual training set to build the frequency dictionary as shown in this cell. Now we can fill in the train naive space function. This function requires a frequency dictionary and the training data. The function outputs the log prior, which is the probability of a tweet being positive versus a negative. We will need this later on to calculate the total probability. The other output is the log likelihood, which is a dictionary that has the probability of a word being in a positive tweet versus negative. The first thing we need to do is count the total number of positive and negative words for all the tweet. We can do this by iterating through each pair in the frequency dictionary and depending if, it, if the word is from a negative or positive tweet, add that to n pause or n neg. Next, we need to calculate the total number of tweets, which we can do by getting the length of train y. We also need to calculate the total number of positive tweets, positive and negative tweets separately. To get d pause, we can just take the sum of train y because positive tweets have y equal to one. To get d neg, we can just take the total number of tweets minus d pods. Now we can calculate log prior, which is the number of positive tweets divided by the number of negative tweets. It is popular to use log here to avoid extreme values.
The last part of the function is calculating the probability of each word being in a positive tweet and vice versa. As we iterate through each unique word, we can get the number of times that word appeared in positive tweets and the number of times that word appeared in negative tweets. Then, just divide these two numbers by the total number of positive and negative words, respectively. Now, rather than having the probability of a word being in a positive tweet and of, for, of the word being in a negative tweet, we can divide these two numbers and log it. This gets us the log likelihood of a word. That tells us that if the value is greater than zero, it is more likely to be in a positive tweet. If it is less than zero, it is more likely to be in a negative tweet. After that last piece of code, this function is able to return a dictionary of the key being all the unique words and the value being the probability of that word being positive versus negative. We can finally train our naive Bayes model. The value of log prior is zero. This means that the probability of the tweet given is positive or negative is the same. And that makes sense because we purposely use the same number of positive and negative tweets. If we print out the, log, the length of the log likelihood, there are 9,084 unique words, and we have the probability of each one of these words being in a positive tweet. After the model is trained, it is time to make predictions. We can create the naive Bayes predict function that needs a tweet, the log prior, and the log likelihood. Then it outputs how confident it is for a tweet to be positive. First, we need to pre-process a given tweet. Next, we create a variable p that keeps track of the confidence of the tweet. Now, we add the log prior to p. After doing this step, we can iterate through each keyword of the tweet, and if the word is in the log likelihood dictionary, then we add the number of that word being in a positive tweet to p. The function will re now return the confidence of the tweet being positive. I have created a couple sample tweets to show the predictor at work. I am happy outputs 2.15. Since this number is greater than zero, the tweet is more likely to be positive than negative. Additionally, as the magnitude of the positive number becomes bigger, the model is more confident. We can see that keywords such as great and happy are a giveaway for the tweet being positive. If the tweet contains only the keyword bad, the output value is negative 5.18. So the model is very confident that this tweet would have negative sentiment. These are only example tweets to show some characteristics of the naive Bayes model, but feel, but feel free to use your own tweets. This is the last part of the code and we are at the end of the workshop. Naive Bayes modeling is only one technique used in natural language processing out of many other more accurate and complicated other models. I hope you enjoyed this workshop and feel free to go to the Discord server if you have any questions about the code or the concept behind it. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and thanks for watching.